The depths of Santos' lies aren't remotely comparable. After all, Biden went to Syracuse Law School, unlike Santos' his purely fictionalized account. But the most important question is, where did Santos get that money? Before the election, the North Shore Leader, a local paper on Long Island, reported that Santos had finally submitted his financial disclosure report 20 months late. He claimed to have a net worth of $11 million, various bank accounts with between one and five million, a condo in Rio, business interests valued at one million, five million dollars. If you go back two years to 2020, he says he had no assets worth over five thousand dollars, no bank accounts, no stocks, no real estate. Net worth was barely over zero. When asked how he made all the money, he claimed between his two runs for office in 2020 and 2022 is when he made all the money. Here's what he told City and State last week. I decide once I leave Harbor City Capital to do my second run for office, I'm opening my own shop. I'm going to do my own consulting like I used to do for Linkbridge. And it just worked because I had the relationships and I started making a lot of money. And I, I fundamentally started building wealth. And I decided I'd invest in my race for Congress. So forgive me if I don't accept that at face value and that I want to actually understand it a little bit better. Back with us tonight is Grant Lally. He's a former Republican congressional candidate from the same district that Santos won. He's also the counsel to the uh, North Shore leader, the only news outlet who reported on Santos' red flags before the election. And Will Bretterman, researcher for the Daily Beast, who worked on the article entitled George Santos' Massive Campaign Loans May Not Be Legal. Um, thank you both for coming on. Appreciate it. So, Grant, let me start with you. Talk to us about the money. I mean, yes, the resume stuff is sort of splashy, right? It's f almost funny, some of it. Uh, some of it's really interesting. But the money is the single most important issue as far as I'm concerned here. Where could he have gotten that money? And, you know, could it have come from some place that's um, sort of frightening? Well, you know, Dan, good evening. And, and uh, this is really where we started by looking at his money and the leader and our reporters all realized that this, this, none of this made sense. None of the numbers added up. His personal wealth what went from zero to what he now claims to be astronomical while he wasn't working. Um, so our assumption was that the $700,000 loan was fake. And, and frankly, that would be the best thing in many ways for both for the country and for everyone else. It means Santos is a liar and that's it. A much more dangerous uh, possibility is that this is, this is somebody else, whether it's the Russian government or some financier, somebody giving him money and then him putting that in the campaign. That's a felony. That's called a straw donation. And it would get everyone involved in that process arrested and jailed. So well, it's, it's a very big question, neither of which, the, neither answer is legal. Um, it's only a question of, of which and what degree. Will Bretterman, uh, look, you, you did a deep dive on this topic. What is your yeah. best guess, conclusion about where this money came from, if it existed uh, at all? If, if I take a, take a step back, uh, I should say that we were reporting on George Santos, and I personally was reporting on George Santos uh, as far back as April. The company he alluded to in the clip you played a moment ago, Harbor City Capital, uh, as uh, we reported, I reported, uh, was an alleged Ponzi scheme. And the DeVolder organization, uh, as I reported all the way back in April, uh, was formed, this company that he purports to have so much income from, uh, was formed with a number of refugees from this uh, alleged Ponzi scheme uh, at Harbor City Capital, wherein uh, he served as, as regional director, and according to the Securities and Exchange Commission, uh, they were paying off new invest sorry paying off old investors with money from new investors. What we've done more recently uh, in recent days is uh, identified several clients or people who have identified themselves as clients uh, of Mr. Santos's. Uh, company that have older organization um, that that these folks include a, a Suffolk County a Long Island a auto dealership uh, the insurance company uh, uh, the Whitmore group uh, and further uh, the uh, Florida uh, lawyer and insurance uh, so these uh, are real clients will just I'm sorry these, to interrupt these you are but, people but I, who are, who are yeah. saying that they are that said yes have come forward and said 
yes, we are. We in, retained this company that of older organization. Yes, uh, uh, we, um, you know, have we have we have taught his services uh, in the manner he has described, which is essentially helping them supposedly offload assets. Uh, I want to touch on the point that Grant made, which is. Why would you hire this individual coming right off of working for what the Securities and Exchange Commission says is a Ponzi scheme? There's a person who has, uh, you know, frankly, would have some difficulty passing a background check. Uh, if you are a billionaire, as as Mr. John of Florida and his uh, family are, uh, you know, if you are a, a, an insurance company like the Whitmore Group, if you do have a successful chain of, long, of, of auto dealerships, why would you choose to contract with this person? I think mm -hmm. that is... The fundamental question we need to answer is, were these, if you know, if these people uh, contracted with him, as they say they did, mm. uh, you know, were, was this a merely a way of getting money to him as a candidate and getting money to his campaign mm. uh, without basically by, you know, bypassing uh, the normal FEC reporting standards? And that that is the uh, fundamental question that we, we have not we don't have an answer to yet. And, and I don't think we'll have an answer to perhaps for some time here. Grant, what do you make of that? Look, these are, these are the big questions. We saw it as a real problem. Uh, the other thing that we saw as a real problem were his FEC, his Federal Election Commission disclosures, where he claims he raised and spent over $3 million on this congressional campaign. But I can tell you, as the local newspaper on the ground in Oyster Bay, Glen Cove, there was no campaign, nothing, prior to Labor Day of this past year. So nothing was spent there was no campaign headquarters there was no uh there was no signs mm -hmm. up uh there was nothing and that tells me that his declaration that he spent over a million dollars is not accurate yeah, at, it, as of that point this is a guy who's in a lot of legal uh trouble put aside the political side of this which i think he'll be able to survive probably until the end of his term but uh, there's a lot of active legal investigations we shall see i think in particular he's going to survive because of what we're going to be talking about later in the show with regard to the very narrow majority in the, uh, in the Congress, Grant Lally and uh, Will Bretterman. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.